Matthew chapter 19, verse number 16. The Bible says, And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is one, none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. He saith unto him, which? Jesus said, Thou shalt do no murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. The young man saith unto him, all these things have I kept from my youth up. What lack I? Jesus said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, that means complete, by the way, in your King James Bible. If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Now take your Bible and go to Luke chapter number 12. Luke chapter number 12. And I want to begin reading at verse number 15. Luke 12, verse 15. And he said unto them, Take heed. Beware of covetousness, for a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesseth. And he spake a parable of them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. And he said, this will I do, I will pull down my barns and will build greater, and there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years, take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee, then who shall those things be which thou has provided. So is he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. This morning there are two men that I want to look at in the Word of God. Tonight there is one lady I want to look at in the Word of God. This morning with the help of the Lord I want to preach on the subject of hindered by your blessings. Tonight, I want to preach on the subject how to handle your blessings. Let's bow together and pray. Father, thank you so much, Lord, for the Word of God. Lord, I pray now that you would help us, Lord, to listen as you speak to our heart. Give me, Lord, I pray, the ability to preach and God the touch to do it with. Lord, I pray now, guide my lips, guard my tongue, help me, God, to bring the message that would most please you. Thank you, Lord, for giving this to me the way you did. And I ask you to do all things in Christ's name. And all God's people said, you can be seated. When I mention the message titled today on hindered by your blessing, it would seem some like an oxymoron that I would say that. How can the word hindered and blessing go together? How in the world can you say that you are hindered and blessed at the same time? Let's look at the two men in the Word of God. You'll find one of these men, the Bible refers to him as a rich young man. 
How do I know that? The Bible says that he had great possessions. And the Bible says that he was morally good. He was a good man. But one of the things that kept him from coming to Christ was the blessings in his life. He did not want to give up some of the things that he had in his life. Jesus didn't want him to give everything up in his life. He wanted him to put him first, and he was not willing to do that in his life. So he was hindered by the blessings in his life. The second man that we find is a man that was so blessed uh, that he had so much that he didn't know what to do with it or where to put it. And so the only thought he had was, because I have so much, because I've been so blessed, I'm going to have to build bigger barns. I'm going to have to have more to store it in. I'm going to have to have more to put it in. And so his whole life focus became uh, making sure that he had something to do with his blessings. The problem with that was, is God said to him, thou fool this night, God said to him, you're not even going to live to build a barn. You're not going to live to store things. You're not going to live long enough. In other words, here are two men, and we do not find in the Word of God that either man ever came to Christ. But they were hindered by the blessings in their life. Amen. Now I want you to listen to me, and I pastor church with well, a majority of it under 50 years of age. And I'm, I'm thankful for that. Not that it's bad to be over that. But churches that are growing with young people and children and families is the kind of church you want to grow in our day and time. But I'm going to tell all of you this. If you believe for a moment that the things you possess in your life are going to come before Christ and you're going to be able to serve Him like you should, you are mistaken. And I want you to understand that today. You're going to be hindered by the blessings in your life. I want God to bless you. I have seen God bless many people through the years. But I've also seen people abuse those blessings. In the text we read today are two people that abused their blessings. Both these men let their blessings keep them from God. I want God to best bless people. But in order for God to do that, we have to be willing to say, Lord, if you bless me in your life, I'm going to keep the main thing, the main thing. God needs churches to have people in it that are blessed. God needs or God may not need, we need to have churches where people have been blessed of the Lord. Why? Because if people are blessed of the Lord and they love God and they do things that are right, then God will honor that and bless that. And God will use you as a funnel to reach people with the gospel of Christ. Today examine your life and ask yourself the question, am I closer to God because of my blessings? Or farther away? Am I closer to God because God has blessed me? Or am I farther away? Am I closer to God because what God has done for me? Or am I farther away than I really should be? We must remember as fast. Now listen. This is a thought God put on my heart during the night. We must remember as fast as the blessings come, they can also disappear. We must remember that as fast as those blessings come, as quick as God blesses us, as wonderful as God blesses us, as quick as they come, they can disappear just as fast. And so today, I want to ask you a question. Are you hindered by your blessings? Can I say this to you? I know what it's like that a gallon of milk and a loaf of bread is a blessing. When I was in Bible college, when I was past a little church with about 18 people in it, with homemade pulpits under my arm, and we're coming in, setting up in a community building, and I was working a job in a meal, 
And some mornings I would get up and there would be groceries on the steps of that 14 by 64 mobile home and somebody put them there for Wendy and I. I know what it's like to look at that and say, man, what a blessing that is. Now that I've been in the ministry 38 years of my life, Miss Wendy and I both will tell you this. I'm not ashamed of this. God's been good to us. God's given us a nice home. God's given us vehicles to drive. God's given us money in our pocket to go get a sandwich, to go out to eat, to take a trip. God's been good to us to clothe ourselves. God's been good to us to take care of things in our life. But friend, I'm telling you, we cannot let the blessings of our life cause us. Listen, I don't know if you've noticed it, but I'm going to show you what blessings do. On the news yesterday, there was about nine people that were arrested for burning buildings and busting windows in a city. Uh, I can't remember which one it was, Portland, Seattle, whatever. Uh, matter of fact, they were doing this in California. Of those nine that were arrested, all Nine of them came from affluent homes. Some of their family lived on Rodeo Drive. I've been there in California. I know what Rodeo Drive's like. Some of them had moms and dads that were corporate owners. Most of them could drive a Maserati into this parking lot, paid for, that cost $200,000. They're busting windows and burning buildings and getting arrested. Do you know why? You say, well, because they're just, uh, and I won't use the word, but it starts with an S and it ends with a Y. And in the middle, stupidity. But I won't say it. But I want you to understand this. It is more than that. It is the stuff that they have is not enough to satisfy their life. Because that's what some of you thought just a moment ago. Boy, if I had a Maserati, I'd be happy. You know, first thing you do, man, I don't know how in the world, I bet it's going to cost a lot to service this. I better save money. I don't know if I can get the oil change. I... Right? Praise God, you can go to an iron and buy you a Corolla. <laughs> Drive that boy through and get a free oil change. Can I get a witness? Say amen. I want you to understand that, listen, we cannot be hindered. I'm trying to help somebody today. Amen. I want to give you three things, and I'm done, about these blessings that God put on my heart. Tonight, I'm going to look at another lady in the Bible that handled the blessings like you ought to handle them. But I want to give you three things to think about. First of all, I, listen now, our blessings can consume us. I jotted in my notes when I got up that morning. Is something really a blessing that takes us away from the Lord? Is something really a blessing that hinders our walk with God? I began to think about people and their blessings. I jotted a few down. That new relationship. That new relationship. Boy, that's a blessing. That job that I have, boy, that's a blessing. That financial increase that I have, boy, that's a blessing. And even additions to our family. I've watched people get blessed and go from the front row to the back. I've watched people's families grow and their spiritual life die. I've watched people that get blessed with things and now instead of enjoying the Lord, they're at the lake on Sunday. I ask you the question, is that blessing bringing you closer to the Lord? Do not misunderstand your pastor. I want you to be blessed. I want God to bless your life. God wants to bless your life. I'll show you that tonight. God wants to, but you can't be consumed by the blessings. Because when you're consumed by the blessings, here's what happens. You forget the blesser. All of a sudden, you're self-made. I get so sick of this 
this selfie generation and self-made entrepreneurs and, and business owners and leaders that are young today that think they're the, they're, the, they're the big cheese of all the world. Can I tell you somebody? You can be here today and gone tomorrow. Do you understand what I'm saying? What I'm trying to say is you don't need to let the blessings in your life hinder you. If you are a born again, saved by grace, child of God, then the very most important thing in your life should be your life with Christ. Bar none. But you know what a lot of us are doing? Being bigger barns. We're storing up. We're missing church because we're blessed and we got stuff. Do you understand that? What's happening to us is we're getting to the place where we're hindered by our blessings. We're consumed by them. Some people have been around things. Uh, some people even intentionally get themselves around people that are blessed so they can enjoy that person's blessings and then it gets them away from God. What y'all going to do today? Well, we're going to take the new ski boat to the lake. Well, y'all are friends. Why don't y'all go with us? Well, we used to go to Sunday school or we used to go to preaching on Sunday. Well, yeah, I know, but Lord, understand if you miss one Sunday, we got this new boat. Next thing you know, I don't see him in church. I'm like, where you at? Right. Amen. Well, preacher, you know, God's been good to us lately. And, you know, we just, we just, we, we ain't never been able to do some of the things we can do now. Listen to me. Doesn't mean that God don't want to get you, let you have a new ski boat. Doesn't mean that God doesn't want you to enjoy your new condo on Ocean Front in Honolulu. And if you have one, I want to be your friend. But what it does mean if it consumes your life, you've done forgot the blesser. You won't give like you used to. Say, oh yeah, I have more. No, you won't. Because you got too many toys to pay for. You got too much stuff. See, because when you go out and you buy that brand new $80,000 Corvette, the insurance company wants to insure it for you. And if you're less than 100 years old, it's going to cost a lot to insure that $80,000 car. So you got to work more hours. You can't give to missions like you could. You, you, can't, you can't give on a special Sunday like November 1st. Why? You're hindered by your blessings. Does anybody listen to me? I believe we could hear a pin drop on carpet. Amen? Don't let them consume you. A lot of you young couples... God bless you with children. I, I'm amazed sometimes. I see on social media, everybody talking about uh, grandparents and all, all these great blessings of these children God's given us. And they don't come to church on Sunday anymore. Mom and daddy's it. Got to go to Tweetsie every week. Of course, it's closed right now. But I got to make sure my little one rides that train every Sunday. Wait a minute. God gave you that blessing. God gave you that child. Amen. God gave you your children and you got the audacity to put them in front of Him? Right. Amen. Are you with me? Amen. Don't be consumed by your blessings. Amen. Number two. Number two. Our blessings can consume us. Number two. Our blessings can't complete us no matter what you are blessed with in your life there is a void that only God can fill probably one of the most wealthy men in the Bible was Solomon he was the wisest man and, and be honest one of the wealthiest men in the Bible here's what Solomon said about it he said I may be great works I built me houses. I planted me vineyards. 
I made me gardens and orchards and planted trees in them of all kinds of fruit. I made me pools of water to water therewith the wood that bringeth forth trees. I got me servants and maidens. Can you imagine that? Go home, somebody's already got your meal cooked and your house cleaned up. Got me servants and maidens. And had servants born in my house. Also I had great possessions of great and small cattle above all that were in Jerusalem for me. Nobody's ever had more than I had, Solomon said. I gathered me also silver and gold and the peculiar treasure of kings of the prophets. I got me men singers, women singers, the lights of sons of men, musical instruments, and that of all sorts. So was I great and increased more than all that were before me in Jerusalem. Also my wisdom remained with me, and whatsoever mine eyes desired, I kept not from them. He said, I don't have money. Anything I wanted, I bought it. I got it. All you young, young couples, listen to me. All you under the age of 50 years old especially, you know, our age now, we start thinking more about retirement than you do. My deal is now, don't go out and buy nothing too dumb because one day you've got to retire and take care. But a lot of you, you think right now, if I just get enough stuff, my marriage don't have to be good as long as I got stuff. My relationships don't have to be good as long as I got stuff. As long as I got stuff, won't complete you. Won't complete a home. Won't complete a family. It will not do it. Listen to this. Whatsoever my eyes desired, I kept not from them. I withheld not my heart from any joy. For my heart rejoiced in all my labor. He said, yeah, I'm proud of the labor I've done. And this was my portion of all my labor. labor. Now listen to this. Then I looked on all the works that my hands had wrought. And on the labor that I had labored to do. And behold, all was vanity and vexation of spirit. And there was no profit under the sun. You would think, boy, that sounds like the life. The wisest man that ever lived said it doesn't complete me. Do you know I've seen people serve God? I have a long history with preacher, pastor, Crabtree. Long history. You've been here how long, preacher, now? 15 years, I've been here 18. How long were you with me in Burlington? Since 95. Working on staff with me. I watched him give up a lucrative job to run a Christian school. And Miss Wendy knows I'm telling the truth. And on Sunday when we would go to the Mexican restaurant, after church, Brother Dermot would go home and eat a, watch now, bologna sandwich, some chips and a drink because he couldn't afford to go to the restaurant and never complained. I watched he and Miss Norma do without to serve. Christian schools are not where to become rich. They're where to go broke if you want to know the truth. Several years ago, and I won't say what it was because it's none of all of our business, Brother Crabtree, after all of his faithfulness, God honored him greatly. For the last several years, Brother Crabtree, probably for the first time in y'all's life, y'all have got where it's not sometimes difficult. He still buys him junk cars. Why? I do not know. <laughs> At least Miss Norma gets a good one. Amen. Brother Dermot said, Oh, I get I got her for $29.99. <laughs> Won't you listen to me? Brother Dermot, you're not any more completed today than you were the entire time in that school. The entire time, every day, you were praying hand to mouth. Or has anybody listened to me? We live in a society today, I think that we got the idea, he who has the most toys wins. If I got more stuff than Brother Parquet, I'm more successful. I got news for you. God does not look at it that way. 
if Brother Paquette had didn't have as much stuff as I do, but he'd won five people to Christ and he'd been faithful to God and he had served God, I promise you I won't be in front of the line because I had more stuff. Is anybody with the preacher? I'm trying to help you today. Our blessings can consume us. Our blessings can com- cannot complete us. And I want to finish with this. Our blessings can chill us. You know what it means to be chilled? It means to be getting cold. I want to read about a church that got chilled. Revelation 3, 14 is the church of Laodicea. The Bible says unto the angels of the church of Laodicea is right. These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works that thou art neither cold nor hot. Can I tell you this? When it comes to me drinking something, if, and my wife will tell you, if I drink coffee, I want it hot enough that it will give me third degree burns. That's the way I drink coffee. My wife would tell you, I drink a half a cup of coffee. She got the same one. She won't touch it for 20 minutes. I'll be going to drink half the cup. If I get a drink, don't give me. Some of y'all like, I want a Coke with no ice. Who gets a Coke with no ice? Put some ice in it, man. And then like crushed ice coming out of a machine. I quit going to Sheets to get a drink because they shut everything down. You got to go drink it out of the bottle in the back. I said, I can do that at home. I want to walk in there and push that button all that crust ice fall out. Then put a little Diet Mountain Dew in it. Lord, have mercy. It gets all in the cubes of ice. Then you chomp on it going down the road and aggravate your spouse. Amen. He said, you done got lukewarm. You're neither cold nor hot because thou says I'm rich. You hear it? Because thou says I'm rich and increase with goods and have need, watch this, of nothing. I'm blessed. Amen. Is anybody with me? Amen. We are living in the Laodicean age. Amen. You are living in Laodicean age, I'm telling you. I'm blessed. Knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor, words of Jesus, and blind and naked. What happens if we get blessed but we grow cold spiritually? Jesus was asked in Matthew 22, 36, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus said in Matthew twenty-two thirty-seven, 37, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. Amen. And then he gives you a second one. Thou shalt love thy neighbors, I say. You ain't even gotten the picture yet. You know what the greatest commandment is? Love God above everything else. You know what the second one is? Love somebody else. Amen. Amen. Some people say real joy in an acronym. J is for Jesus. The O is for others. And the Y is for yourself. Amen. That's how to be joyful in your life. That ain't our day. Our day is everybody wants to get what they can, can what they get showboat it, put it in front of God. Christians are doing it. I have no problem with you zooming across the lake in a boat. I have no problem with you going up to your condo on the top of Mount Mitchell, overlooking. I have no problem with you driving your brand new Dodge. (laughs) I have no problem with that. Matter of fact, I'm tickled to death that you can But here's the problem, is when that stuff, Brother Jared, becomes more important than my relationship to God. Is anybody with the pastor? You know what happens though? 
Oh, y'all listen, I'm done. It's right at 12. We're getting ready to shut her down. You start chilling. Y'all know what Y'all like to chill. You know, y'all chilled. But I'm talking about getting... See, when you get cold, your movement ceases. It's harder for you to be mobile when you're cold. My wife gets cold. She gets cold in the summer. When the winter gets here, she's frostbit every day. I'm talking about when it's 60, 55. Her feet touch me under the covers. It causes me to have revival. I mean, hold on. Any of you ladies do that? Your poor husband, or maybe he's like that, but he is. I don't know. I mean, but I'm telling you, man, I'm talking about her feet touch me, so I'm like, whoa, hallelujah. <laughs> you ain't careful spiritually. You start getting cold. You don't have no movement. You go to church still. But let's be honest, the whole time you're at church, you're so consumed by your blessings, you got them on your mind. I'm trying to help somebody. I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost woke me up as plain as day and gave me this. I'm not being around the bush. I'm being honest. I, as God is my witness, you know, uh, strike me right now. I'm dead, God, if ain't the truth. I never say that again. You can't miss it, you know. You can miss it. But listen to me. A lot of you young families, God's gave you these children. You got the idea that your child having their feet in the sand at the beach every weekend is the best way to raise your kids? And it's okay to do that. But when it becomes a priority over your relationship with God and having your family in church, you think God blessed you with children to keep you out of church? Am I right, Miss Seth's wife? You, you getting ready to have your first child. Can I tell you right up front? That's a gift from God. God's blessed you with that youngin. Don't put that youngin in front of Christ. Are you listening? Hindered by your blessings. Preacher, I've got more in my checking account than I ever had. I'm tickled for you. Preacher, I'm saving money now. Hallelujah. That's wonderful. But are you consumed so much that's all you think about? What about your relationship to Christ? What about soul winning? What about giving the missions? What about helping your church get that new auditorium? Preacher, I'd help you, but I'll be honest with you now. It ain't just helping me. I'm 56 years old. I don't know how much longer I'm going to do this as a pastor. It's for a future generation down the road. Amen. I mean, good at best, maybe 10 years, I don't know. Maybe not that. But it's a generation down the road that we're trying to do things for. But how can we do them if we're so consumed with our blessings? Amen? Amen. We got people in the ministry that aren't even in the ministry. You got people that God's called to do something for Him, but they can't do something for Him because of the blessings. I got to have the stuff. You don't think I thought about that when I got started? When I was driving a Ford truck down the road that I put more oil in it than I did gas? And I was working underneath a tufting machine, laying underneath it in a mill at night, and 18 people in a church on Sunday morning. And I looked around my life, and people got the nice stuff. You don't think I ever thought, man, if I wasn't in the ministry, I could go have some nice stuff. But God met the needs during that. You say, well, preacher, I don't see you struggling today. You're right, I don't. I have a wonderful church that takes care of me, a wonderful God that takes care of me. Amen. I don't have want for nothing. I'm going to be totally honest with you. I do not go to bed at night and think, oh, if God don't supply this, I ain't going to make it. I don't have that. Now, now, give this to a lot of you young men. I'm quitting. 
a lot of you young men that maybe God called to preach. If you think you're going to pastor a Calvary Baptist church, first thing God's going to give you. God's going to give me a church with three or four hundred people. God's going to give me a great business. I'm going to have seven on the staff. There's a few fortunate enough to see things roll in line with that. But for the most part, God's going to give you two grumbling deacons, a choir director who couldn't sing a note they had to. And it's wonderful to go preach at a church and the choir director can't even sing. Amen. I've been there. you got to wait on God and be faithful. I hope you've got some help today. Amen. This morning, hindered by your blessings. But tonight, I'm going to show you a lady that knew how to handle her blessings. Her name was Hannah. And she knew how to handle her blessings. And we'll look at that tonight. Brother James, I want you to come. Miss Heather, I want you to come up if you would. I want everybody to stand, but I don't want you to leave. Do you know what I mean by that? I want you to stay with me. Stand to your feet. How many of you right now with a resounding, resounding amen could say God's blessed you in your life? Say amen. amen. How many of you would say right now, God's been better to you than you deserve. Would you agree with that? I want to ask you a question. Are you hindered by that? Are you better because of that?